I'm Peter Block at TC2 2015 in San Francisco for On the Scene. There's a lot happening at TCT and one of the issues that is being presented today is the issue of a difficult problem. What do you do with patients who are at high risk for bleeding if you want to put in a stent? Dual antiplatelet therapy is a problem. How long do you do it? Do you need it at all and so forth? And now with me is Philip Urban from Geneva who has presented the Leaders Freedom Trial, is that right? Leaders Free Trial. Philip, uh, Philip, tell me what this trial is, short version, and then we'll talk about what you found. Okay, so precisely as you said, we're looking at HBR, high bleeding risk patients, and we're comparing an active stent with no polymer, a DCS, we call it, drug-coated stent, to a bare metal control, and we give one month DAPT only in both arms, and we follow them out for one year for clinical events. So this is really to ask a very specific clinical question, isn't it? How do you deal with the one problem that really you don't know how to deal with, and that is how long do you continue dual antiplatelet therapy? What did you find in the two groups? Okay, we were thrilled by the results because we found that we met our superiority endpoint for efficacy. We halved the TLR rate, and we found that we actually had a very nice surprise in that the safety events were lower with the active stent and one month DAP than they were with the bare metal stent, 29% reduction in risk, significant. Well, that's rather extraordinary and not anticipated, isn't it? Absolutely, not anticipated, it's thrilling. And all that in a group of patients who really were at increased risk of bleeding, the BART three to five bleeding rate was 7% in both groups. So very seriously ill patients with a high risk of bleeding. So even though you only kept the dual antiplatelet therapy up for a month, they still had some bleeding issues, correct? Absolutely correct. Half of the bleeding occurred during the first 30 days on DAPT and half of the bleeding occurred during the ensuing 11 months on SAPT, single antiplatelet therapy. So you're not completely risk-free with this trial result, are you, in terms of bleeding, but you certainly can cut down on the DAPT, can't you? Absolutely, yes. We can't get rid of the bleeding completely. We assume it would have been quite a bit higher if we had stuck with DAPT throughout for a year as the US guidelines or six months as the European guidelines would recommend for a DES. Well, you know, as I think about this, Philip, this is a really rather groundbreaking trial, isn't it? Because many of our guidelines don't really get into this issue at all, and they may have to change. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more. We're thrilled with the results. We think it will change the game, and we'll see how it goes down uh, when presented. Absolutely. Okay, so there is uh, the answer, a partial answer, to a difficult question for high bleeding risk patients. Philip, give me uh, sort of a one sentence take home for all those people out there that didn't really understand what we just said. I think bare metal stents are out of the game. I think if, you, if you're worried about duration of DAPT, I think this device will be a whole lot better than bare metal stents. So there you have it, an answer to the high bleeding risk patient or at least a partial one. Thank you, Philip. Thank you.